it is often useful to assign charges to atoms within a molecule. Two different schemes exist, oxidation states, which we have already seen, and formal charges. Both can be found via Lewis dot structures. Let's take the Lewis structure for the cyanide anion, Cn-, to highlight the differences between the two approaches. None of the oxidation state rules allow us to assign charges within the cyanide anion. In these cases, one uses electronegativity to assign oxidation numbers. The most electronegative atom takes all the shared electrons. As nitrogen is more electronegative, all six electrons in the triple bond are assigned to the nitrogen atom, and none to the carbon atom. Of the 10 total valence electrons, two belong to the carbon and eight belong to the nitrogen. A free carbon atom has four valence electrons, and now it only has two, so its oxidation state is positive two. A free nitrogen atom normally has five valence electrons, and now it has eight, so its oxidation state is negative three. The sum of the two is the charge on the molecule, negative one. With formal charges, shared electrons are shared perfectly, despite the nitrogen atom being more electronegative. Therefore, three electrons of the triple bond go to the carbon, and three to the nitrogen. Five electrons are assigned to each atom. Free carbon and nitrogen atoms have four and five valence electrons, respectively, so the carbon atom has a formal charge of negative one, and the nitrogen has a formal charge of zero. Formal charges can determine the quality of a Lewis dot structure. All three of the following are reasonable for N2O. At first glance, all are equally reasonable. However, if we calculate the formal charges, we have the following. We should avoid, if at all possible, any formal charges. For N2O, this is not possible. Failing that, we want to avoid charges more extreme than negative one or positive one. Therefore, the first structure is not very good. Of the last two, both seem equally good. However, it is best to place a negative charge on the most electronegative atom. Oxygen being more electronegative than nitrogen, the third Lewis dot structure is the best. All three Lewis dot structures were reasonable, but the third was the best. Sometimes we can have two or more Lewis structures that are clearly equally good. Consider the following three structures for the nitrate anion NO3-. They are all technically different, but clearly of equal quality. In such cases, a resonance exists, and in reality, we have a superposition of all three Lewis structures. Because of this, all three nitrogen-oxygen bonds will be identical and intermediate between a single and double bond. Finally, sometimes we simply cannot have octets on all the atoms. This is clearly the case where we have an odd number of electrons. If an octet is not possible on every atom, we get as close to eight as possible. However, eight electrons is an absolute maximum for atoms in the second period, such as carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. So if eight is not possible, seven is the only option. Nine is not an option. Therefore, for a system like NO2 with 17 valence electrons, we get a Lewis dot structure where the nitrogen atom is associated with only seven electrons. Finally, for atoms of the third period, such as phosphorus and sulfur and beyond, eight electrons are no longer an absolute maximum, as 3D orbitals allow these atoms to take on more electrons. An octet is always good, but when necessary, these atoms have no problem taking on 10 or 12 electrons, as in the following structures.